Good morning, folks and family. This is Raymond Extra Profit again coming to you live from my apartment living room. Today is Sunday, August 30th, 2020, and 8.26 a.m. And this is the Word of the Day, Part 1, for May 8th, 2020. Once again, the Word of the Day, Part 1, May 8th, 2020. Let's go ahead and start with the first general entry I have for you. This is May 7th, 2020, at 10.44 a.m. And the message I received is, A South Wind is Coming. A south wind is coming. Let's go ahead and start in the book of Job, chapter 37, verse 17. You whose clothing is warm when the earth is still by reason of the south wind. Psalm 78, verse 26. He caused the east wind to blow in the sky. By his power he guided the south wind. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, verse 6. The wind goes toward the south and turns around to the north. It turns around continually as it goes and the wind returns again to his courses. Song of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 16. Awake, north wind, and come you south. Blow in my garden, that his spice, spices may flow out. Let my beloved come into his garden, and taste his precious fruits. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 12, verse 55. When a south wind blows, you say, there will be a scorching heat, and it happens. The book of Acts, chapter 27, verses 13 through 15. Key verse 13. When the south wind blew soft, and supposing that they had obtained their purpose, they weighed anchor and sailed along Crete close to shore. But before long, a stormy wind beat down from shore, which is called Euryclidon. When the ship was caught and couldn't face the wind, we gave way to it and were driven along. Numbers chapter 11, verse 31. A wind from Yahweh went out and brought quails to the sea, let them fall by the camp about a day's journey on this side and a day's journey on the other side, around the camp, and about two cubits above the surface of the earth. Job chapter 3 verse 8 Let them curse it who curse today who are ready to rouse up Leviathan. Job chapter 6 verse 17 In the dry season they vanish. When it is hot they are consumed out of their place. Job chapter 37 verses 16 and 18 Do you know the workings of the clouds? The wondrous works of him who is perfect in knowledge? Can you with him spread out the sky which is strong as a cast metal mirror? Job chapter 38, verse 31. Can you bind the cluster of Pleiades? Can you bind the cluster of Pleiades? Or loose the cords of Orion? Psalm 78, verse 27. He also rained meat on them as a the dust, winged birds as the sand of the seas. Psalm 135, verse 7. He causes the clouds to rise from the ends of the earth. He makes lightnings with the rain. He brings the wind out of his treasuries. Psalm 147, verse 18. He sends out his word and melts them. He causes his wind to blow and the waters flow. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 7. All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full to the place where the rivers flow. There they flow again. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 5. I made myself gardens and parks, and I planted trees in them of all kinds of fruit. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 5. As you don't know what is the way of the wind, nor how the bones grow in the womb of her who is with child, even so you don't know the work of God who does all. Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verses 4 and 13. Take me away for you. Take me away with you. Let's hurry. The king has brought me to his rooms. Friends, we'll be glad and rejoice in you. We will praise your love more than wine. Beloved, they are right to love you. My beloved to me is a sachet of mirror that lies between my breasts. Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verses 3 and 8. As the apple tree among the trees of the wood, so is my beloved among the sons. I sat down in his shadow of great delight. His fruit was sweet to my taste. The voice of my beloved, behold, he comes, leaping on the mountains, skipping on the hills. Song of Solomon, chapter 4, verses 13 and 14. Your shoots are an orchard of pomegranates with precious fruits, henna with spiked plants. Spikenard and saffron, calamus and cinnamon of every kind of incense tree, myrrh and aloes of all the best spices. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 1. Lover, I have come into my garden, my sister, my bride. I have gathered my myrrh with my spice. I have eaten my honeycomb with my honey. I have drunk my wine with my I have drunk my wine with my milk. Friends, eat friends, drink, yes, drink abundantly, beloved. Song of Solomon chapter 6 verse 2. Beloved, my beloved has gone down to his garden, 
to the bed of spices, to pasture his flock in the gardens, and to gather lilies. Song of Solomon, chapter 7, verses 12 and 13. Let's go early up to the vineyards. Let's see whether the vine has budded, its blossom is open, and the pomegranates are in flower. There I will give you my love. Song of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 12. My own vineyards before me, a thousand are for you, Solomon, two hundred for those who tend its fruit. The book of Isaiah, chapter 51, verses 9 through 11. Awake, awake, put on strength, arm of Yahweh. Awake in the days of old, the generations of ancient times. Is it you who cut Rahab in pieces, who pierced the monster? Is it you who dried up the sea, the waters of the great deep, who made the depths of the sea a way for the redeemed to pass over? Those ransomed by Yahweh will return, and come with singing to Zion. Everlasting joy shall be on their heads. They will attain gladness and joy. Sorrow and sighing shall flee away. The Gospel of Matthew chapter 6, verse 3. But when you do merciful deeds, don't let your left hand know what your right hand does. Matthew chapter 20, verse 12. Saying, These last have spent one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. Matthew chapter 26, verses 10 and 12. However, knowing this, Jesus said to them, Why do you trouble the woman? She has done a good work for me. For in pouring this ointment on my body, she did it prepare me for burial. In the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse 8. The wind blows where it wants to, and you hear its sound, but don't know where, it's from, where it comes from and where it is going. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Acts, chapter 2, verse 11. Cretans and Arabians, we hear them speaking in our languages the mighty works of God. Acts, chapter 27, verses 8, 12, and 21. With difficulty sailing along, it we, we came to a certain place called Fair Havens, near the city of Lycia. Because the haven was not suitable to winter in, the majority of I is going to sea from there, if by any means they could reach Phoenix and winter there, which is a port of Crete, looking southwest and northwest. When they had been long without food, Paul stood in the middle of them and said, Sirs, you should have listened to me, and not set sail from Crete and gotten this injury and loss. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verses 10 through 15. Now may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food, supply and multiply your seed for sowing, and increase the fruits of your righteousness, you being enriched in everything for all generosity, which produces thanksgiving to God through us. For this service of giving that you perform not only makes up for lack among the saints, but abounds through also through much giving of thanks to God, seeing that through the proof given by the service they glorify God for the obedience of your confession to the good news of Christ, and for the generosity of your cont contribution to them and all. For your and the generosity of your contribution to them all, to them and to all, while they themselves also, with supplication of behalf, yearn for you by reason of the exceeding grace of God in you. Now thanks be to God for his unspeakable gift. Titus chapter 1 verses 5 and 12. I left you in Crete for this reason, that you would set in order the things that were lacking and appoint elders in every city as I directed you. One of them, a prophet of their own, said, Cretans are always liars, evil beasts and idle gluttons. Okay, folks, a family, the next general intro I have for you. May 7, 2020, 11.15 a.m. A land flowing with milk and honey. A land flowing with milk and honey. Let's start with Exodus chapter 3, verses 8 and 17. I've come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good marge land, to a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanite, the Hittite, the Amorite, the Pezzarite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite. I have said, I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt to the land of Canaanite, the Hittite, the Amorite, the Pezzarite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite, to a land flowing with milk and honey. Exodus chapter 13, verse 5. It shall be when Yahweh brings into the land of Canaanite, the Hittite, the Amorite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite, which he swore to your fathers to give you, a land flowing with milk and honey, that you shall keep the service in this month. Exodus chapter 33, verse 3. Go to a land flowing with milk and honey, but I will not go up among you, for you are stiff-necked people, lest I consume you on the way. Leviticus chapter 20, verse 24. What I have said to you, you shall inherit the land, their land, and I will give it to you to possess it, a land flowing with milk and honey. I am Yahweh your God, who has separated you from the peoples. Numbers chapter 13, verse 27. They told him and said, We came to the land where you sent us. Surely it flows with milk and honey, 
and this is its fruit. Numbers chapter 14, verse 8. If Yahweh delights in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land which flows with milk and honey. Numbers chapter 16, verses 13 and 14. It is a small thing that you have brought us up out of a land flowing with milk and honey to kill us in the wilderness, but you must also make yourself a prince over us. Moreover, you haven't brought us into a land flowing with milk and honey, nor giving us an inheritance of fields and vineyards. Will you put out the eyes of these men? We won't come up. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 3. Hear therefore Israel, and deserve to do it, that it may be well with you, that you may increase mightily as Yahweh, the God of your fathers, has promised to you, in a land flowing with milk and honey. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 9. And that you may prolong your days in the land which Yahweh swore to your fathers, to give to them and to their offspring a land flowing with milk and honey. Deuteronomy chapter 26, verses 9 and 15. And he has brought us into this place and has given us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. Look down from your holy habitation from heaven and bless your people Israel and the ground which you have given us as you swore to our fathers, a land flowing with milk and honey. Deuteronomy chapter 27, verse 3. You shall write on them all the words of this law when you have passed over that you may go into the land which Yahweh, the God of your fathers, has promised you. Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 20. For when I have brought them to the land which I swore to their fathers, flowing with milk and honey, and they have eaten, filled themselves, and grown fat, then they will turn to other gods and serve them, and despise me and break my covenant. Joshua chapter 5, verse 6. For the children of Israel walked forty years in the wilderness until all the nation, even the men of war who came out of Egypt, were consumed because they didn't listen to Yahweh's voice. Yahweh swore to them that he wouldn't let them see the land which Yahweh swore to their fathers that he would give us, a land flowing with milk and honey. Jeremiah chapter 11 verse 5 Thou may establish the oath which I swore to your fathers to give to them a land flowing with milk and honey as it is today. Then I answered and said, Amen, Yahweh. Jeremiah 32 verse Jeremiah chapter 32 verse 22 And gave them this land which he swore to their fathers to give them, a land flowing with milk and honey. Ezekiel chapter 20 verses 6 and 15 And that day I swore to them to bring out of the land of Egypt into a land that I had searched after them, flowing with milk and honey, which is the glory of all lands. Moreover, also I swore to them in the wilderness that I would not bring them to the land which I had given them, flowing with milk and honey, which is the glory of all lands. Okay, folks and family, the Spotify worship song I have for you is by Hillsong Worship. And the name of the song is called Elohim, the live version. So Hilo Elohim, the live version by Hillsong Worship. And I'll post both these links in the description box below, both of those. Both the Spotify link and the YouTube link. Okay, folks and family, the next challenge I have for you is May 7, 2020 at 12.18 p.m. He is filled by heart with gladness, that is, joy. He is filled by heart with gladness, that is, joy. Let's start with Psalm, chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. You have put gladness in my heart more than when their grain and their new wine are increased. In peace I will both lay myself down and sleep, for you alone, Yahweh, make me live in safety. Judges, chapter 9, verse 27. They went out into the field, harvested their vineyards, trod the grapes, celebrated, and went to the house of their God, and ate and drank, and cursed Amalek. Psalm 16, verse 9. Therefore my heart is glad, and my tongue rejoices. My body shall also dwell in safety. Psalm 17, verse 15. As for me, I shall see your face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake without, with, with, when I shall be satisfied when I awake with seeing your form. Psalm 30, verse 11. You have turned my mourning into dancing for me. You have removed my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness. Psalm 37, verse 4. Also delight yourself in Yahweh, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Psalm 43, verse 4. Then I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy. I will praise you on the heart, God, my God. Psalm 63, verses 2 through 5. So I've seen you in the sanctuary, watching your power and your glory, because your loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise you, so I will bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. My soul shall be satisfied as with the richest food. My mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. Psalm 97, verses 11 and 12. 
Light is sown for the righteous, and gladness to the upright in heart. Be glad in Yahweh, you righteous people. Give thanks to his holy name. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 3. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased their joy. They rejoice before you according to the joy in the harvest, as men rejoice when they divide the plunder. Jeremiah chapter 48, verse 33. Gladness and joy is taken away from the fruitful field and from the land of Moab. I have caused wine to cease from the wine presses. No one will tread with shouting. The shouting will be no shouting. The Acts of the Apostles, chapter 14, verse 17. Yet he didn't leave himself without witness, in that he did good and gave you rain from the sky in fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. Okay, the next journal entry, the final one, is May 7, 2020. 101 p.m. This is the message I've received. The seven bowls judgments of God. The seven bowls judgments of God. And let's start with Revelation chapter 15, verse 7. One of the four living creatures gave to the seven angels seven golden bowls full of the wrath of God who lives forever and ever. Revelation chapter 16, verses 1 through 21. Key verses 2 through 4, 8, 10, 12, and 17. I heard a loud voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go and pour out the seven bowls of the wrath of God on the earth. The first went and poured out his bowl into the earth, and it became a harmful and painful sore on the people who had the mark of the beast and who worshipped his image. The second angel poured out his bowl into the sea, and it became blood as, became blood as of a dead man. Every living thing in the sea died. The third poured out his bowl into the rivers and springs of water, and it became blood. I heard the angel of the water saying, You are righteous who are and who were, O holy one because you've judged these things, for they poured out the blood of the saints and prophets, and you've given them blood to drink. They deserve this. I heard the altar saying, Yes, Lord God Almighty, the true and righteous are your judgments. The four poured out his bowl in the sun, and it was given to him to scorch men with fire. People were scorched with great heat, and people blasphemed in the name of God who had the power of these plagues. They did repent and give him glory. The fifth poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast, and his kingdom was darkened. They gnawed their tongues because of the pain, and they blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores. They still didn't repent of their works. The sixth poured out his bowl in the great river, the Euphrates. His waters were dried up that the way might be prepared for the kings that come from the sunrise. I saw coming out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet, three unclean spirits, something like frogs. For they are spirits of demons performing signs, which goes out to the kings of the whole inhabited earth to gather them together for the war of that great day of God the Almighty. Behold, I come like a thief. Blessed is he who watches and keeps his clothes, so he doesn't walk naked as they, and they see his shame. He gathered them together into a place which is called in Hebrew, Armageddon. The seventh poured out his bowl into the air. A loud voice came out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, it is done. There were lightning sounds and thunders, and there was a great earthquake, such as not has happened since there were men of the earth, so great an earthquake and so mighty. The great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. Babylon the great was remembered in the sight of God to give to her the cup of the wine of the fiercest of his wrath. Every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. Great hailstones about the weight of a talent came down out of the sky on people. People blaspheming God because of the plague of the hail, for this plague was exceedingly severe. Genesis chapter 7, verse 22. All on the dry land, and whose nostrils with the breath of the Spirit of life, died. I'm sorry, let me try that. Yeah, that's right, that's correct. All on the dry land, and whose nostrils with the breath of the Spirit of life, died. Genesis chapter 7, verse 22. Exodus chapter 7, verses 17 through 21. Yahweh says, In this you shall know that I am Yahweh. Behold, I will strike with the rod of my hand on the waters, which are in the river, and they shall be turned to blood. The fish that are in the river will die, and the river will become foul. The Egyptians will live, live to drink the water from the river. Yahweh said to Moses, Tell Aaron, Take your rod and stretch out your hand over the waters of Egypt, over the rivers, over their streams, and over their pools, and over all the ponds of water, that they may become blood. There will be blood throughout all the land of Egypt, both in vessels of wood and in vessels of stone. Moses and Aaron did so, as Yahweh commanded, and he lifted up the rod, and struck the waters that were in the river in the sight of Pharaoh, 
in the sight of the servants and all the waters that were in the river were turned to blood. The fish that were in the river died. The river became foul. The Egyptians couldn't drink water from the river. The blood was throughout all the land of Egypt. Yahweh said to Moses and Aaron, Take handfuls of ashes of the furnace and let Moses sprinkle toward the sky in the sight of Pharaoh. It shall become small dust over, the, over, over all the land of Egypt, and it shall be boils and blisters breaking out on man and on animal throughout all the land of Egypt. They took ashes of the furnace and stood before Pharaoh, and Moses sprinkled up toward the sky and it became boils and blisters breaking out on man and, and on animal. The magicians couldn't stand before Moses because of all the boils, for the boils were on the magicians and on all the Egyptians. That's Exodus chapter 9, verses 8 through 11. Exodus chapter 10, verses 21 through 23. Yahweh said to Moses, Stretch out your hand toward the sky, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. Moses stretched out his hand toward the sky, and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt for three days. They didn't see one another, and nobody rose from his place for three days, but all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 15. Yahweh will take away from you all sickness, and he will put none of the evil diseases on e of Egypt, which you know, on you, they will lay them on all those who hate you. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 27 and 35. Yahweh will strike you with the boils of Egypt, with the tumors, with the scurvy, with the itch, of which you cannot be healed. Yahweh will strike in the knees and the legs with a sore boil, of which you cannot be healed, from the sole of your foot to the crown of your head. Psalm 78, verse 44. And he turned the rivers into blood and their streams so that they could not drink. Isaiah chapter 8 verses 7 and 22. Now therefore, behold, the Lord brings upon them the mighty flood waters of the river, the king of Assyria in all his glory, that will come up over all its channels and go over all its banks. Then look to the earth and see distress, darkness and the gloom of anguish. They will be driven into thick darkness. Isaiah chapter 11 verse 15. Yahweh will utterly destroy the tongue of the Egyptian sea. With his scorching wind, he will wave his hand over the river and will split it into seven streams and cause men to march over in sandals. Isaiah chapter 41, verses 2 through 3 and 25. Who is raised up from the east? Who is called into his feet in righteousness? He hands over nations to him and makes him rule over kings. He gives them like the dust to his sword, like the driven stubble to his bow. He pursues them and passes by safely, even by a way that he has not gone with his feet. I have raised up one from the north, and he has come. From the rising of the sun, one who calls on my name. And he shall come on rulers as on mortar, as a potter treads the clay. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 15. I will destroy mountains and hills, and dry up all their herbs. I will make the rivers islands, and dry up their pools. Isaiah chapter 44, verse 27. Who says to thee, be dry, and I will dry up your rivers. Isaiah chapter 46 verse 11 I call a ravenous bird from the east, the man of my counsel from a far country. Yes, I have spoken, I will also bring it to pass. I have planned, I will also do it. Jeremiah chapter 50 verse 38 A drought is on her waters, and they will be dried up, for it is a land of engraved images, and they are mad over idols. Jeremiah chapter 51 verse 36 Therefore Yahweh says, Behold, I will plead your cause and take vengeance for you. I will dry up her sea and make her fountain dry. Ezekiel chapter 38, verse 1 through chapter 39, verse 29. Yahweh's word came to me, saying, Son of man, set your face toward God, and let him God, the prince of Rosh, Meshesh, and Tubal, and prophesy against him, saying, The Lord Yahweh says, Behold, I'm against you, God, prince of Yah, Rosh, Meshesh, and Tubal. I will turn you around and put hooks into your jaws, and I will bring you out with all your army, horses, and the horsemen, all of them clothed in full armor, a great company with buckler and shield, all of them hailing swords, Perse, Persia, Cush, and put with them, all of them with shield and helmet, Gomer and all his hordes, the house of Togomar and the uttermost parts of the north, and all his hordes, even many peoples with you. Be prepared, yes, prepare yourself, you and all your companies, who are assembled to you, and be a guard to them. After many days you'll be visited. In the latter years you will come to the land that is brought back from the sword, that is gathered out of many peoples, on the mountains of Israel, which have been a continual waste. 
who has brought out the peoples, and they dwell securely, all of them. You will ascend, you will come like a storm, you will be like a cloud to cover the land, you and all your hordes, and many peoples with you. The Lord Yahweh says, It will happen that day that things will come to your mind, and you will devise an evil plan. You will say, I will go up the land of unwalled villages, I will go to those who are at rest, who dwell securely, all of them dwelling without walls, and having neither bars nor gates, to take the plunder and to take the prey, to turn your hand against the waste places that are inhabited, and against the people who are gathered out of the nations. You have gotten livestock and goods who dwell in the middle of the earth. Sheba, Dedan, and the merchants of Tarshish, of all its young lions, will ask you, Have you come to take the plunder? Have you assembled your company to take the prey, to carry away silver and gold, to take away livestock and goods, to take great plunder? Therefore, son of man, prophesy and tell God, the Lord Yahweh says, In that day when my people Israel dwell securely, will you not know it? You will come to your place at the uttermost parts of the north, you and many peoples with you, all of them riding on horses, a great company, and a mighty army. You will come against my people Israel as a cloud to cover the land. It will happen in the latter days that I will bring you against my land, that the nations may know me when I am sanctified in you, God, before their eyes. The Lord Yahweh says, Are you he of whom I spoke in the old time? By my servants, the prophets of Israel, who prophesied in those days for years, that would bring you against them? It will happen in that day when God comes against the land of Israel, says the Lord Yahweh, that my wrath will come up into my nostrils. For in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath I have spoken. Surely in that day there will be a great shaking in the land of Israel, so that the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, the animals of the field, all creeping things who creep on the earth, and all men who are in the surface of the earth will shake at my presence. And the mountains will be thrown down, the steep places will fall, and every wall will fall to the ground. I will call for a sword against him to all my mountains, says the Lord Yahweh. Every man's sword will be against his brother. I will enter judgment with him with pestilence and with blood. I will rain on him, on his hordes, and on the many peoples who are with him, torrential rains with great hailstones, fire, and sulfur. I will magnify myself and sanctify myself, and I will make myself known in the eyes of many nations. Then they will know that I am Yahweh. You, son of man, prophesy against Gog and say, The Lord Yahweh says, Behold, I am against you, Gog, Prince of Rosh, Meshul, and Tubal. I will turn you around, will lead you on, and cause you to come up from the other parts, parts of the north, and I will bring you into the mountains of Israel. I will strike your bow out of your left hand and cause your arrows to fall out of your right hand. You will fall on the mountains of Israel, you and all your hordes, and all the peoples who are with you. I will give to you red as birds of resort, and to the animals of the field to be devoured. You will fall on the open field, for I have spoken it, says the Lord Yahweh. I will send the fire on Magog and those who dwell security in the islands. Then they will know that I am Yahweh. I will make my holy name known among my people of Israel. I will allow my holy name to be profane anymore. Then the nations will know that I am Yahweh, the Holy One of Israel. Behold, it comes, and it will be done says the Lord Yahweh. This is the day about which I have spoken. Those who dwell in the cities of Israel will go out and make fires of the weapons and burn them, both the shields and the buckers, the bows and the arrows, and the war clubs and the spears, and they will make fires with them for seven years, so that they will take no wood out of the field and not cut down any of the forests, for they will make fires with the weapons. They will plunder those who plundered them and rob those who robbed them, says the Lord Yahweh. It will happen that day that I will give the Gog a place for burial in Israel, the valley of those who pass through on the east of the sea. They will stop those who pass through. They will bury Gog and all his multitude there, and they will call it the valley of Ham and Gog. The house of Israel will be burying them for seven months, that they may cleanse the land. Yes, all the people of the land will be buried them, and they will become famous in the day that I will be glorified, says the Lord Yahweh. They will set apart men of continual employment who will pass through the land, those who pass through will go with those who bury those who remain on the surface of the land to cleanse it. At the end of seven months they will search. Those who search through the land will pass through. When anyone sees a man's bone, then he will set up a sign by it until the undertakers have buried it in the valley of Hamangah. Hamona will also be the name of the city. Thus it will cleanse the land. You son of man, the Lord Yahweh says, Speak to the birds of every sort, and to every animal of the field, assemble yourselves and come. Gather yourselves on every side to my sacrifice as a sacrifice for you, even a great sacrifice on the mountains of Israel, that you may eat meat and drink blood. You shall eat the flesh of the mighty and drink the blood of the princes of the earth, 
of rams, of lambs, of goats, of bulls, all the fatlings of Bashan. You shall eat fat until you are full, and drink blood until you are drunk, of my sacrifice, which I have sacrificed for you. You shall be filled at my table with horses and charioteers, with my mighty men, and with all men of war, says the Lord Yahweh. I will set my glory among the nations, then all the nations will see my judgment that I have executed, and my hand that I have laid on them. So the house of Israel will know that I am the Yahweh their God. From that day and forward, the nations will know that the house of Israel went to captivity for their iniquity, because they trespassed against me, and I hid my face from them, so I gave them to the hand of their adversaries, and they all fell by the sword. I did to them according to their uncleanness and according to their transgressions. I hid my face from them. Therefore the Lord Yahweh says, Now I will reverse the captivity of, Jake, captivity of Jacob, and have mercy on the whole house of Israel. I will be jealous for my holy name. They will forget their shame and all their trespasses by which they have trespassed against me. When they dwell securely in their land, no one will make them afraid when I brought them back from the peoples, gather them out of the enemy's lands, and am shown holy among them in the sight of many nations. They will know that I am Yahweh their God, and that I caused them to go into captivity among the nations and have gathered them to their own land. Then I will leave none of them captive anymore. I won't hide my face from them anymore, for I poured out my spirit on the house of Israel, says the Lord Yahweh. Daniel chapter 11, verses 43 through 45. But he will have power of the treasures of treasures of gold and of silver, and over all the precious things of Egypt. The Libyans and the Ethiopians will follow his steps. But news out of the east and out of the north will trouble him, and he will go out with great fury to destroy and utterly to sweep away many. He will plant the tents of his palace between the sea and the glorious holy mountain. Yet he will come to his end, and no one will help him. Daniel chapter 12, verses 7 through 13. I heard the man clothed in linen, who was above the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand to heaven, and swore by him who lives forever and ever, that it will be for a time, times, and a half, and a half. And when they have finished breaking in pieces the power of the holy people, all these things will be finished. I heard, but I didn't understand. Then I said, My Lord, what will be the outcome of these things? He said, Go your way, Daniel, for the words are shut up and sealed until the time of the end. Many will purify themselves and make themselves white and be refined, but the wicked will do wickedly. Another wicked will understand, but those who are wise will understand. From the time that the continual burnt offering is taken away and the abomination that makes desolate set up, there will be 1,290 days. Blessed is he who waits and comes to the 1,335 days. But go your way until the end, for you will rest, and will stand in your inheritance at the end of the days. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13, verses 42 and 50. And will cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And will cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Matthew, chapter 24, verse 51 and will cut him in pieces and appoint his portion with the hypocrites. That is where the weeping and grinding of teeth be. will be. Acts chapter 2 verse 41 Then those who gladly received his word were baptized. There were added that day about 3,000 souls. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 2 In which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the children of disobedience. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 for our wrestling is not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against the powers, against the world rulers of the darkness of this age, and against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 9. For they themselves report concerning us what kind of reception we had from you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God. Revelation chapter 1, verse 18. And the living one, I was dead, and behold, I am alive forever and ever. Amen. I have the keys of death and of Hades. Revelation chapter 4, verses 6 through 10. Before the throne was something like a sea of glass, similar to crystal, in the middle of the throne, around the throne were four living creatures full of eyes and behind. The first creature was like a lion, the second creature like a calf, the third creature had a face like a man, and the fourth was like a flying eagle. The four living creatures, each one of them having six wings, are full of eyes around and within. They have no rest day and night, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God, the Almighty who was and who is and who is to come. When the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, to him who lives forever and ever, the twenty-four elders fell down before him who sit on the throne, 
and worship him who lives forever and ever, and throw their crowns before the throne, saying, Revelation chapter 5, verse 8, Now when he had taken the book, the four living creatures, and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb, each one having a harp, and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. Revelation chapter 6, verse 12, I saw when he opened the sixth seal, and there was a great earthquake. The sun became black as sap cloth made of hair, and the whole moon became as blood. Revelation chapter 7, verses 2 and 16. I saw another angel ascend from the sunrise, having the seal of the living God. He cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to harm the earth and the sea. They will never be hungry or thirsty anymore. The sun won't beat on them, nor any heat. Revelation chapter 8, verses 7 through 9, and verse 12. The first sounded, and there was followed hail and fire, mixed with blood, and they were thrown to the earth. One third of the earth was burned up, and one third of the trees was burned up, and all the green grass was burned up. The second angel sounded, and something like a great burning mountain was thrown into the sea. One third of the sea became blood, and one third of the living creatures which were in the sea died. One third of the ships were destroyed. The fourth angel sounded, and one third of the sun was struck, and one third of the moon, and one third of the stars, so that one third of them would be darkened, and the day wouldn't shine for one third of it, and the night in the same way. Revelation chapter 9, verses 2, 14, 17, and 18. He opened the pit of the abyss, and smoke went up out of the pit, like a smoke from a burning furnace. The sun and the air were darkened, because of the smoke from the pit. Saying to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, Free the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. Thus I saw the horses in the vision, and those who sat on them, having breastplates of fiery red, hyacinth blue, and sulfur yellow and the horses' heads resembled, resembled lions' heads. Out of their mouths proceeded fire, smoke, and sulfur. By these three plagues, one-third of mankind was killed by the fire, the smoke, and the sulfur, which proceeded out of their mouths. Revelation chapter 10, verses 2, 6, and 7. He had in his hand a little open book. He set his right foot in the sea and his left on the land, and swore by him who lives forever and ever, who created heaven and the things that are in it, the earth and the things that are in it, and the sea and the things that are in it, that there will be no longer be delay. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, which is about to sound, then the mystery of God is finished, as he declared to his servants the prophets. Revelation chapter 11, verses 2, 6, 8, 10, 14 through 15, and 19. Leave out the court which is outside the temple, and don't measure it, for it has been given to the nations. They will tread the holy city underfoot for forty-two months. These have the power to shut up the sky, but they may not rain during the days of their prophecy. They have power over the waters to turn into blood and to strike the earth with every plague as often as they desire. Their dead bodies will be in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also their Lord was crucified. Those who dwell on the earth will rejoice over them and they will be glad. They will give gifts to one another because these two prophets tormented those who dwell on the earth. The second woe is past. Behold, the third woe comes quickly. The seventh angel sounded, and great voices in heaven follow, saying, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ. He will reign forever and ever. God's temple that is in heaven was open, and the ark of the Lord's covenant was seen in his temple. Lightnings, sounds, thunders, an earthquake, and great, ha great hail followed. Revelation chapter 13, verses 1 through 4, 12, 15 through 18. Then I stood on the sand of the sea, I saw a beast coming up out of the sea, having ten horns and seven heads. On his horns were ten crowns, and on his heads blasphemous names. The beast which I saw was like a leopard, and his feet were like those of a bear, and his mouth like the mouth of a lion. The dragon gave him his power, his throne, and great authority. One of his heads looked like it had been wounded fatally. His fatal wound was healed, and the whole earth marveled at the beast. They worshipped the dragon because he gave authority to the beast. And they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? He exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence. He makes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast, whose fatal wound was healed. It was given to him to give breath to the image of the beast, and that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as wouldn't worship the image of the beast to be killed. He calls us all, the small and the great, the rich and the poor, and the free and the slave, to be given marks on their right hands or on their foreheads, and that no one would be able to buy or sell, 
unless he had that mark, which is the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. He who has understanding, let him calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. Revelation chapter 14, verses 9 and 10, 15 through 18. Another angel, a third, followed him, saying with great voice, If anyone worships the beast in his image and receives a mark on his forehead or on his hand, he also will drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is prepared undicts in the cup of his anger. He will be tormented with fire and sulfur in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him who sat on the cloud, Send your sickle and reap, for the hour to reap has come, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. He who sat on the cloud thrust his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. Another angel came out of the temple, which is in heaven. He also had a sharp sickle. Another angel came out from the altar who has power of a fire, and he called with a great voice to him who had the sharp sickle, saying, Send your sharp sickle and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for the earth's grapes are fully ripe. Revelation chapter 15, verse 1. I saw another great and marvelous sign in the sky, seven angels having seven last plagues, for in them God's wrath is finished. Revelation chapter 16, verses 1 and 2. I heard a loud voice in the temple saying to the seven angels, Go and, pour out, go and pour out the seven bowls of the wrath of God on the earth. The first went and poured out his bowl to the earth, and it became a harmful and painful sore on the people who had the mark of the beast and who worshipped his image. Revelation chapter 16, verses 1 and 2. Revelation chapter 16, verse 11. And they did blaspheme the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores. They still didn't repent of their works. Revelation chapter 17, verses 1, 9, 15, and 17. When the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and spoke of me, saying, Come here, I will show you the judgment of the great prostitute who sits on many waters. Here is the mind that has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits. He said to me, The waters which you saw where the prostitute sits are peoples, multitudes, nations, and languages. For God has put in their hearts to do what he has in mind, to be of one mind, and to give their kingdom to the beast, until the word of, words of God should be accomplished. Revelation chapter 18, verses 11 through 19. The merchants of the earth weep and mourn over her, for no one buys her merchandise anymore. Merchandise of gold, silver, precious stones, pearls, fine linen, purple, silk, scarlet, all expensive wood, every vessel of ivory, every vessel made of most precious wood, and of brass, and iron, and marble, and cinnamon, incense, perfume, frankincense, wine, olive oil, fine flour, wheat, sheep, horses, chariots, and people's bodies and souls. The fruits which your soul lusted after have been lost to you. All things that were dainty and sumptuous have perished from you, and you will find them no more at all. The merchants of these things who are made rich by her will stand far away from the fear of her torment, weeping and mourning, saying, Woe, woe, the great city. She was dressed in fine linen, purple and scarlet, and dip of gold and precious stones and pearls. For in an hour, such great riches are made desolate. Every shipmaster and everyone who sails anywhere, and mariners, and as many as gained a living by sea, stood far away, and cried out as they looked at the smoke of her burning, saying, What is like the great city? They cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and mourning, saying, Woe, woe, the great city in which all who had their ships in the sea were made rich by reason of her great wealth, for she has made desolate in one hour. Revelation chapter 20, verses 1 through 3. I saw an angel coming down out of the heaven, having the key of the abyss and the great chain in his hand. He sees the dragon, the old serpent, which is, who was the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole inhabited earth and bound him for a thousand years, and cast him to the abyss and shut it and sealed it over him, that he should deceive the nations no more until the thousand years are finished. After this, he must be freed for a short time. Finally, Revelation chapter 21, verses 6 and 9. He said to me on the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, I will give freely to him who is thirsty from the spring of the water of life. One of the seven angels who had the seven bowls, which were loaded with the seven blast plates, came and he spoke with me, saying, Come here, I will show you the bride, the Lamb's wife. Okay, folks and family, the Spotify worship song I have for you is by One Sonic Society, featuring essential worship and vertical worship. And the name of the song is called The Goodness of God. The Goodness of God by the One Sonic Society featuring essential worship and vertical worship. And I'll post both these links 
in the description box below both the Spotify link and the YouTube video link you see listed here. He has filled my heart with joy. Okay, folks and family, that's the word for day part one for May 8, 2020. Once again, the word for day part one, May 8, 2020. Today is Sunday, August 30th, 2020, 9.43 a.m. This is Raymond X, the prophet, coming to you once again from my apartment living room. God bless you all as you go about your day today. Read your Bible every day. Worship God, spirit, and truth. Pray, pray, pray till you can no longer get another word out of your mouth. And also, take the communion bread and cup every day if you want to save yourself. God loves you, and so do I very much. Take care of yourselves. Remember, Jesus Christ is coming very, very soon. This is your day of redemption, your day of salvation, your day to redeem yourself, the day to repent. Everyone have a great Sunday, and I will see you on the next video upload, if the Lord wills me so. Bye-bye now. For now, I love you. Take care.